What's going on, folks? It is K Spade the Prospect, the leader of the Wolfpack himself, the CEO of the Made Man crew here on the Xbox One. I'm back today with a brand new gameplay for you guys. In the background, man, you got some NBA 2K18 Pro Am gameplay featuring yours truly doing work with a bill people say you really can't do work with. So that's just for you to view. The commentary, on the other hand, I kind of want to talk about the NBA 2K League, which is officially rolling now. And I just kind of want to give my opinion. Some good, some bad, some things that I feel like they can do a little bit better on. You know, typical stuff I do. Now, I'm going to go ahead and warn you. I'm a fan of the league, but I also believe in giving some hard truths. So, you know, if you got thin skin and you're a league supporter, if you got thin skin anywhere, I don't know, this might not be the channel for you. For everybody else, man, go ahead and bang that like button. If you're new here, go ahead and hit subscribe. You're probably going to hear something that intrigues you. That's what I try to do. So, without any further ado, let's get rolling, man. The NBA 2K League is officially rolling now. And when I say that, y'all like, wait a minute. It's been official for a minute now. I mean the season. The season is rolling. So first we had the draft combine that got everybody hyped. I felt like the, the anticipation for the league was at an all-time high. We saw 72,000 people cut down to 102. Then we saw a draft that I got to admit I was pretty doggone excited for. Even got a chance to see one of my own friends get drafted into this league. And we was off, you know, was ready to go. After that, we was given a tournament. That tournament was pretty entertaining, if I don't say so myself. Now, the elephant in the room was the viewership. This is always going to be a topic of conversation when you talk about the 2K League, for obvious reasons. The viewership on that tournament was up and down. It wasn't as high as I'm sure anybody would have liked to see, for those of us that support the league. But I was telling myself, okay, you know, this is just a tournament. This isn't the regular season. You know, viewership will be fine. Now, let me stop right there and back up for a minute. The league was born with pessimists out there saying this league won't make it. And it's not just because people are against the sport of basketball or against 2K. People have been saying that sports titles and esports don't necessarily go hand in hand. I felt like this was a perfect time to prove those people wrong. No knock on the Madden scene, but the Madden scene is one guy versus one guy. And it's tough to kind of build an audience, I feel like anyway. Like you can build because when you got a team, a, a team, whether it's esports, real team, whatever, and I see this firsthand with my own team, they kind of build individual identities and they form together to make that one team. It's like a boy group, you know? Even though we knew Justin Timberlake was the talent of NSYNC, even though we knew Justin Timberlake was the talent of NSYNC, those other dudes had fans too, right? So I, I like being able to have, you know, five guys on stage versus five guys. I felt like that was going to be better for a sports title, you know, getting their reign into the esports scene. All the money that needed to be shelled out was shelled out. Professional logos was designed for the teams. Um, team housing, and every team don't have team housing. Some of these teams got their guys in uh, apartments, but they are still very nice, like luxury apartments. Some teams got whole mansions over there in Sacramento, like they living it up. The money was shelled out and now everybody want to see this money made back through the viewership. Now, the NBA 2K League launched a partnership with Twitch, which, again, I felt like was a really good idea. Twitch, when you talk about live streaming platforms, who's messing with Twitch right now? Nobody. So that's going to be perfect. You put them on Twitch. I felt like the partnership would really benefit these guys more so than I'm seeing. But let me continue on. All this money was shelled out, man. Advertisers was brought in. If you ever watch one of these games live, they cut to commercial just like you watching a real game that'll come on TNT or ESPN. They cut to the, you know, cut to the advertisements. They come back. They've got commentators in that's got to get paid. Everybody's getting paid, you know, and, and these advertisers just buying in to get those spots. You better believe they looking at the numbers. I, that's the only way you sell an ad spot. I can't sell you an ad spot for 5,000 people. I can. But the rate at which I'm selling you that ad spot is not the same as we're expecting 20,000 or 30 or 40 or even 50. So, all right, let me let me continue. I'm a little all over the place, but stick with me. So let me continue. In the beginning, I thought the league was doing a really good job of trying to promo this thing. They got a chance to get their name in some other places. Adam Silver did a few interviews where he spoke on this league and said, in his opinion, this league is the fourth professional league of the NBA. You got the official NBA, you got the WNBA, you got the G League, and then you got the 2K League. They had to go back and adjust the pay to the guys in the G League, but some of those guys in the G League was going to be making less or were already making less than these gaming athletes, I'm still calling y'all athletes, relax, going to be making in the 2K League. 
everything was going good. I felt like the buzz was high. Uh, Dimes even got a chance to be on TV. They put Dimes on TV, the first pick of the draft, for those that don't know. And, you know, he was talking to Byron Scott. They, it looked great. I said, this thing is going to be a hit, and I'm rooting for it. I want to see it be a hit, for obvious reasons. So the tournament rolled out. And like I said, viewership was kind of low during that tournament. And I was like, okay, you know, be straight. It'll be good. And then the official season hit. And the numbers I was seeing was blowing my mind. I mean, 4,000, 5,000. I think the highest viewership of one of these games was 13,000 live viewers, which sounds good. I don't know if 13,000 hits their projections. I really, I couldn't, I tried to find this when I was starting this video. I couldn't find their official projections for viewership. But I think 13,000 is kind of on the low end. You, you want to go higher than that. But sadly, some of those games didn't even hit 10,000. Some of them didn't hit eight. Matter of fact, the average viewership for these games are around 6,000 live viewers. Okay, so what did they do wrong? Is it their fault? Is it out of their hands? Is it really just no market for the league? Let's, let's move on to that, all right? One of the big mistakes I feel like the league did before they even got rolling was they waged a war against the five out. I never understood that. I know somebody's going to jump in the comment section and say, Spade, nobody likes the five out. It's boring, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I hear you. At the end of the day, I can't speak for everybody, but for me, at the end of the day, I want to see a competitive game. I want to see an entertaining competitive game. If it's two teams five out in each other to sleep and it goes to OT, I'm here for it. Rather than, you know, two guys, two teams just out there trying to run sets and it's clunky and it's sloppy and it don't really look like high quality hoops, whether it's virtual or real life and and it ends i don't i don't think that's what people want to see either so here's what the league did that i disagree with allow each of these teams to have their own identity from the onset if if you got a team that prefers to run five out let them run five out that's their identity if you look at the real nba it's 30 teams out there they're not all playing the same some play fast tempo some slow it up some are set heavy. They run a lot of sets and formations. Some just kind of come down and just freelance it up. Those are their identities. When you see a team like the Rockets or the Warriors launching a crap ton of threes, and then you see, I don't know, the Grizzlies of old, they're not that team anymore, go back to the basket with two bigs and just pound, you know, pound the ball down into the paint. I, I felt like that's what the league needed. You need varying identities. You don't want to take 17 teams and say you all are gonna run sets you all are gonna run plays because that's not gonna be everybody's strong suit so now you got some teams just playing out of their character for some reason i don't know what i feel like the league should have done is let the viewers decide they don't like five out but i feel like by the league coming out saying you're not gonna be able to play five out in this league and, I, and when i say the league said it i don't mean like the official nba 2k league made a statement like you won't be able to play five out in this league but various ambassadors of the league, team managers, team coaches, whatever you want to call it, if they're coming out saying you're not going to run five out in this league, you're not going to see five out in our league, five out won't work in our league. So now when you see Cavs Legion play and you got Hood running the five out, you got people in your comment section, in the chat going, look at these guys, they're running the five out, they're bombs. And I'm like, see, I, I think that's really bad that the league made their... They, they already made that bad. They alienated that before it even started. That's just one thing, all right? Another thing, they did well with putting dimes on TV, but there's so many other opportunities that I feel like some advertisements or some promo could really go a long way. Right now, I don't think you're getting anybody in the comment section or anybody live watching these games that's not an NBA 2K Pro-Am player. And if you did all this only to entertain other Pro-Am players, it, that is not going to work. For one, most of these Pro-Am players are salty they not in the league, so they looking for reasons to nitpick and complain anyway. And otherwise, the Pro-Am community is not that big. It's growing. It's a rapidly growing community, but it's not that big. Just a few years ago, the mode wasn't even in the game. I was one of the folks begging for them to put the mode back in the game, even though it wasn't called Pro-Am. You, you know what I'm talking about. Stay with me. So here's the thing. It is the NBA postseason right now. Everybody's tuning in. Viewership of the playoffs is through the roof. Why not buy an ad spot? Why not advertise your fourth league during your biggest league's postseason when viewership is highest? I mean, I don't know. I'm sure it's not cheap. And, and to be fair, you don't see G League commercials either. And they really just started making WNBA ads like that. So, I mean, these are just things I feel like it needs. It's a lot of money that was shelled out up front. And... You know, you want to make that money back. 
let me get back in on the five out thing again everybody who's so adamantly against the five out i got a question for all of you including the people that represent the league every team i've seen that's not running any variation of five out you know what they're doing paint mashing so do would you rather see five out and the point guard get 50 or paint mashing and the center get 50 what's i mean what, what difference does it make at the end of the day man I, I feel like you need to let these teams play and if it's a flaw in the game allow 2k to deal with that the previous year it was heavy pnr that was the meta everybody ran pnr the reason why they're not running pnr that heavy this year doesn't work as well as it did the previous year let 2k go back to the lab and say okay why is five out so effective what can we do to make it not be so effective what can we do to discourage people from wanting to do it every single time down the court that's not these kids it's not these guys i was going to call them kids i don't mean that in an offensive way but it's not these guys fault that's just how i feel about it all right so look i got some numbers pulled up right here man like i said first of all uh cap Another thing the league is going to do, I said they was going to do it before they got here and they've done a great job of it. Some mistakes are going to be made along the way and I expect them to realize, okay, we probably did this wrong, let's change something on the fly and they've been doing so. At first they said, whatever position you're drafted at, that's the position you have to play in the league. And I said to myself, I don't know about that. That's kind of crazy. Imagine Utah taking Donovan Mitchell and saying, you might have played some point guard a little bit here and there in your life, but you're never going to play point guard for us. We drafted you as shooting guard, and I don't care what happens, you're our shooting guard. We got rookie Rubio at the one, that's it. You're our shooting guard. Rubio goes down in the postseason. They quickly move Donovan Mitchell over to the one, and guess what? He excels there. He looks good there. I'm not saying you want him to stay there all the time, but as a team, adjustments have to be made, and some of these adjustments require you to move people from position to position, especially your more versatile guys. If anything, I think that makes the league more valuable. It shows... It shows the, the skill gap. Everybody can't jump from one position to the next. So the guys that can, why hold them back? And they made that change. I think it's, it's work. Um, like I keep talking about Cavs Legion. Hood, I'm sure, was drafted as a point guard. He quickly moved too small forward where he felt like he could cook with that build. And they, and they run a lot of five out. Cavs Legion team runs a lot of five out. And it's entertaining to me. I like it. Maybe I'm the weirdo here. I'm cool with that. But you have to realize, okay, we did this wrong let's fix it as soon as possible and i think they've done a really good job of that you don't want to say you know what we probably messed that up we'll fix it next season i don't think you got that luxury you're going to start to see um people who are buying ads and, and some of the companies or investors you're going to start seeing people backing out if this viewership doesn't doesn't grow so you got to start thinking what can we do to raise viewership one like i said man the nba don't get any more eyes on it than it does right now in the postseason and this is a supreme time to advertise for your league i follow the 2k league twitter account and i'll see tweets about players and stuff because i follow them but i don't know if anybody who's not in to the 2k league stuff i don't know if they get any of these updates i, I don't know if people know I, I really don't i'm talking about outside of our circle the people that's not on youtube the people that, that don't know to go to twitch to find a game how are you advertising to them how Here's another question. They got a partnership with Twitch. I went to Twitch to find a game and I haven't seen every single game because somebody's going to come through and say, no, one time for sure it was. But I went to Twitch and I had to type in NBA 2K League to get to the game. They didn't even have a front page. You got a partnership with their platform. How, how do they not get the, the front page? You got to... I mean, that should have been in the contract. Who, who negotiated that? If I'm negotiating that contract, that's what I'm asking for. I want the front page. Put Ninja on the put Ninja under us. And, you know, I don't know. I'm just I'm just saying. I'm just throwing things out there. Um, this is definitely something that can be fixed, though. Advertising is one. Getting these guys in other areas is another. And the last thing I want to say, let these guys express themselves. Now, sometimes you'll see a cutaway away from the game the camera showing the player you see him he's animated he's talking to other folks and you have no idea what he's saying in the games that i've seen now i understand the reason for that because if something unfiltered comes out you got a lot of advertisers investors people you don't want to upset or offend i get it but maybe that's the immersion that the crowd needs maybe we need to be immersed into what's going on you got the, I think his name is Wild Walnut. That dude is extremely charismatic. He's animated. He's great for TV. He's great for this. Put the camera on him up close and personal. I want to hear him when he say, he can't guard me. Get him off me. I want to hear it during the game. 
Now they're doing a great job of after the game, I guess after they go through and search all this stuff and make sure it passes protocol, you'll see them tweet out a video of one of these players getting animated. I want to see it during the game and I want to see more of it. I want to see more of it. Um, also, I've seen some people that work for these companies say, if you can get to the studio, man, these games are even more entertaining if you're in the studio. And I believe them. But you got to understand it doesn't seem that authentic coming from somebody who has, you know, uh, it, it's a conflict of interest. You think somebody that worked for that is not going to say that? Reach out. Get some of these social guys who got a big reach. Give them tickets. Fly them up. Bring them to the event. Make it a big deal. Let those guys talk about it because they got bigger reach than some of your team managers. Get one of these social media heroes and fly them out. Show them a good time. You know, let them get courtside. Talk about it like they do when celebrities go to the NBA game. Kevin Hart is sideline. It won't be Kevin Hart, but whoever. I just make up something. So and so is sideline. And, you know, bring a mic over. Talk to him. What do you think about it? Hey, man, this is crazy. I don't know. Right now, I just feel like the elephant in the room is viewership. I think the games have been entertaining. And the commentators. Let me speak on that before I get out of here. How long have I been talking? Too long? Yeah, it's about time for me to shut up. The commentators have been amazing, and I was really concerned about that. That's a really big thing in esports. The commentators have to create that atmosphere. They have to give you the nuances of what's the video game. They have to fuck. I mean, we know, but everybody who's watching don't know the nuances of the video game as far as what archetypes these people are using, what limitations they face in those arts. And I feel like, I mean, you got great games being played. Every once in a while, you get a blowout, but that happens in the NBA as well. I've seen some really good games, buzzer beaters, overtime games. The commentators have been great. The atmosphere looks amazing. And only 5,000 people saw it. Only 6,000 people saw it. Only 7,000 people saw it. Viewership is going to be key. I want the league to succeed in the utmost way. My, my, my DMs are open, league. Hit your boy up. I'm not saying I got all the answers. I don't. But some of this stuff I think I could help with. And I want to see you guys make it. Got to get that viewership up. Uh, give me y'all feedback, man. If you're watching the video, if you disagree with anything I said, let me know. I got thick skin. I can take it. If you guys agree with what I'm saying, let me know. I, I really want to know what you guys think about it. Oh, one last thing, and then I'll shut up. Also, your scheduling got to be a little bit better. You got some games going on while it's playoff games going. Now, I, you know, I'm crazy enough that I get up here and live stream when the playoff games are going because I got a core small group that's going to support me whenever. But that was built over time. And this league don't necessarily have that support group right now. You got to make sure you striking at the right times. And right now, you guys are not. But anyway, I think I've talked too long. I hope the video is not over. I might have to get clever with the editing. But that's all I got for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it, man. Like I said, I like to open my comment section for discussion. Um, you know, be free to hit me up. If you don't want to put it in the comment section, tweet me. All links will be in the description. I am out to next time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace. Twenty twelve thirteen LeBron. This, this sniper has now been activated.